Well, the, the answer to all of this, you heard Gary Cohn, you heard <coughs> WHO about the future. The answer, of course, is a vaccine. And uh, today, <coughs> big rivals, <coughs> excuse me, two big pharma rivals announced that they were going to be working together. The Sanofi and GSK said that they will be pooling their resources uh, to find a vaccine and using GSK uh, technology and know-how will be ramping it up. It's an unprecedented collaboration with Ms. Roger Connor, the president of GSK Global Vaccines, who joins me from Belgium. Roger, it is good to have you. Uh, Roger, we need to understand, first of all, you know, we, everybody's talking about a vaccine. Just tell me in simple terms there is no doubt somebody will find a vaccine in the next year is that right it's not a question of if it is a question of when isn't it yeah Richard it's good to talk to you yeah I think a vaccine will be found there's no doubt that it's a challenge to find a vaccine this is it's not a normal easy research and development process what we really believe is that that this is all about creating multiple options. So today, announcing that GSK and Sanofi come together, I mean, two of the world's biggest vaccines players saying that we're gonna join forces and work on this together, I think is a big day. We're joining forces to share technology, people, capability, but actually it's the scale of the vaccine that's gonna be important. How much can you make and when? And that's the great thing about these two companies coming together because we have that manufacturing scale. But you're right, it's going to take time to get there because it's not a quick process. So as I understand it, uh, Sanofi is bringing in sort of the, their know-how about the vaccines and you're bringing in your know-how about how to make that vaccine go as far as possible and be able to scale it up. What about this? There are many people now trying to make or working on making vaccines. Is it a case of first to succeed and get through trials wins the jackpot? Or do you anticipate there will be multiple vaccines in the fullness of time? Well, we really think that there has to be a number of, of vaccines to really ser serve as the complete need um, of the population. So there's, I, I think there's going to need to be a number of uh, vaccines that come through. The important thing is that we need more now going into the development process because some of those will fail. So we want a high number now, some of those will fall over, and then we'll have a number of vaccines that come through. It's, it's not necessarily the first vaccine that comes through. It's the vaccine that comes through with the scale of manufacturing process that we think will make the biggest difference. So what we've done in GSK is we've done a number of collaborations. We're working with seven groups working on different vaccines using this adjuvant technology that you mentioned. This technology allows you to boost the immune response in the vaccine, which makes the dose smaller, which means that we can get more dose doses out faster and help more people. Therefore, having a collaboration means that we've got more shots on goal. Uh, to, to, to finally, and we don't count dollars before bodies uh, on this program and a business program, but it is a reality that you'll be making this and selling these vaccines if and well when you actually get it. In the view of GSK, is this potentially a big earner in the future or is this really just simply not a consideration? If you lose money till your heart's content for the foreseeable future on this vaccine, that'll be just fine by you. You see, for, for us at the moment, this is completely all about the science and getting this done and getting it done fast. This task force we put in between GSK and Sanofi, these scientists are just thinking about how do we save every single day in this development approach. What we have said in GSK though, Richard, is across that portfolio of vaccines that we have, we don't expect to make a profit during this pandemic. What we're going to do, if we make any short-term profit, we're going to put it back into the development of coronavirus vaccines but also pandemic preparedness. We have to make sure the world is better prepared for this and if it were to happen again. And I think we've got some work to do on that. We're also going to discount the price of the adjuvant that we supply. And for the most in need countries, we'll donate it as well. Roger, we have a second or two more. I just want to pick up on that point you just made about pandemic preparedness. How do we prevent 
Once it's over, we're back to work. The offices are open. How do policymakers, uh, not you know, sort of say, yeah, 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 we'll spend a bit extra on pandemic preparedness, but we won't spend what's necessary. I, I think this will be a big topic and and one that will be talked across the industry. As far as as we're concerned, there are a number of key elements that need to be looked right. into. That ability that ability to react react fast with technologies and with with tracking and tracing of infection is critical to any pandemic readiness. Right. Also, having the capacity, let's say capacity available to, to sprint, that the minute that you've identified that a pandemic might happen, that you're making vaccine at risk in capacity that is ready to go. And as GSK, that's one of the things that we're really focused on at the moment, making sure that we continue to invest in pandemic readiness, both in terms of that technology readiness, but also capacity readiness for the future as well.